Coindesk's Consensus magazine recently published an article that featured the Museum of Modern Art's Madeleine Pierpont. She said that while there's been a hyper-financialization in the NFT space, money's actually not a dirty word in art. Now, this got me thinking. Are NFTs still thriving in the art world? In the article written by Coindesk journalist Daniel Kuhn, he says it's sometimes easy to overlook exactly how far NFTs have penetrated into the art world, given how thoroughly the general public has just rejected the speculation and the hype that's become synonymous with the asset class. Major auction houses like Sotheby's and Christie's still routinely run NFT sales, and they've been quite successful. I spoke to Sotheby's head of digital art and NFTs, Mikhail Buchana, recently to find out just how far digital art has penetrated the traditional art world and if he thinks the momentum that was gained in 2021 has staying power. Let's take a listen. Mikhail Buchana, welcome to First Mover. Thank you for having me. I'm going to be honest, Mikael, we haven't talked about NFTs in kind of a long time on this show, despite the fact that everyone thinks that we are either in a bull market or heading into a bull market that's very different than last bull markets. Why do you think that NFTs aren't in the headlines the same way they were during the last bull? I think people start to really get um, interested again or curious about it when the market hits up. And uh, we definitely see uh, the, the market being way more stronger than a few months ago. Uh, but they've been, it, it's been with the help of one year, one year and a half of bear market for some. But for me, it was a great moment to really uh, focus on the art, on, the, the, on identifying the, the, the real collectors who were here for the, for the art. And then for us who've been like in, the, in traditional art, for uh, many years uh, at Sotheby's, it's now very interesting to um, evolve in uh, this in this new market, this very young market using technology uh, in art. Tell me about your audience at Sotheby's. So I I imagine you have the audience that is really interested in traditional art, and I imagine now with your NFT projects that you're attracting a new audience. Tell me about that traditional audience first. Are they receptive to, to this new digital innovation? Are they curious about NFTs or is it a completely new audience that is engaging with you on the NFT front? No, it's, it's, a, it's a new audience. And it's, the past three years, we've been extremely active in the NFT space. We've made hundreds of sales. Uh, we sold thousand, dozens of thousands of NFTs for hundreds of millions. And uh, we've developed a great network of collectors. And now when we do sales, we are able to reach the whole uh, NFT and digital art collectors, the core collectors really impacting the NFT market. Although with our positioning in the traditional art uh, market, we have also this possibility to reach uh, our wider audience. Uh, it's extremely uh, challenging though, because there is still many barriers for co to collect uh, digital art, tokenized uh, assets, uh, that involves hold, having a wallet, a self-hosted wallet, uh, understanding the the value of owning something that is not uh, that is dematerialized, and uh, this goes uh, along with a lot of education. And uh, for some of our more curious and uh, like collectors, uh, there is some that start uh, to collect, but always on the lower price end uh, because it's an easy uh, onboarding. Um, uh, it, it's easier to onboard these collectors at the lower price points. And then for the top prices, when we achieve, like we sold a 6 million work by Dmitry Chaniak last year. And um, like, I think it makes sense. It, we can understand that at this value, there is more like more uh, crypto, NFT, uh, native uh, collectors being interested in, in investing that much into the, 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 this medium yet. Uh, but we see this evolving. And I think the, the past month we've seen uh, institutions, museums, public collections starting to collect, acquiring uh, some uh, digital artworks by some of the top NFT artists we see today. And this with time, they, they have one goal is like educating the wider audience uh, via exhibitions, education, etc. So we'll see with time, we'll start to see some people being more aware of what's happening uh, with this new medium. And, uh, and of course, it'll come then to the market and they'll become a purchaser. What do you think needs to happen for those more traditional collectors to be interested in digital art 
and NFTs? I think uh, like there is all this barrier that it needs to be f to to feel less uh, frictional when collecting NFTs. Uh, today, uh, people who are, are also very confident in holding crypto are, are confident holding NFTs, and also some people who don't want any exposure to crypto just because they don't know anything about it, they will be they will they will have ex exposure by holding NFTs or ordinals or any other tokenized asset. Uh, so that sometimes I think it's a barrier for tra traditional collectors and we could see entering into a new phase, maybe next cycle, uh, where uh, NFTs, digital art is really less uh, uh, correlated to crypto. Or uh, sometimes I just wonder, like, do we really want or need these traditional collectors to be onboarded? We've created like this past three years, there have been like an amazing amount of collectors that created like a lot of volume in 21, like thanks to the bull market. Uh, but which is still today in a very uh, more reasonable market, uh, very uh, interesting, and uh, I and it's mostly dominated by uh, non by crypto native or NFT native uh, collectors. So I wonder and if we need necessarily an onboarding like the older generation of collectors. Uh, when we look at previous movements in the history of art, uh, there like. Like, for example, the Impressionism movement in the late uh, 19th uh, century, they were not like chasing or trying their best to onboard the older generation who were uh, collecting classic uh, traditional art. Uh, it, it just created really naturally a new audience that gets interested with their own generation of artists and aesthetic. And so it created actually this new generation of artists and collectors. Uh, so I, I could see something also very similar happening with this uh, new medium. Um, and uh, so I understand the will to bring also new uh, actors into this market. Some of them have the uh, very important buying power and also uh, a certain sensibility to aesthetic and art and, and other uh, a knowledge of the history of art. Uh, but it may not be the, the, the key here in, 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 uh, in growing. It's interesting that you bring that up. You know, you're saying that as the younger generations get older, they are maybe going to be interested in this type of art. And so your audience is going to grow that way. Talk to me about the evolution. Talk to me about the evolution of generative art. That's something that's been around for uh, a little bit longer than NFTs, a little bit longer than crypto. It is something that uh, maybe bridges the gap between traditional art and and nft art how does generative art come into the discussion here yeah i think generative art has a very um, special space uh, place uh in the nft space but also in the way technology has uh, impacted uh the art creation um again creativity for the artist and it started with the computer in the 1960s um you have very difficult access to computers. There were only three in France in the early 60s, only for uh, researcher and people working in the army, for example. And only a handful of artists had managed actually to get access to these computers. And uh, there were already sort of conceptual artists, so thinking more, uh, putting forward the idea rather than the, out, uh, the, the result of the work. And uh, they had this chance of using the computer and created the first uh, computer works, based works. Uh, and then this technology, we know it evolves very quickly over the, the past decades. And it, it, it gave, uh, first it allowed uh, democratization of the use of the computer, like from the 70s, 80s, we see the computer being uh, purchasable for any individual. And so the artists had access on a daily basis with the computer and were able to actually advance even far, uh, farer and, and quicker in their creation process. And so we, we saw a great development of digital art using computer in the 70s, 80s, 90s. And then with the web art, the, the use of URL and web pages as a canvas. And then comes the blockchain, which I think is the most important uh, milestone uh, within this uh, 70 uh, years of digital art, because it has not only like uh, enabled the, a new tool to the artist, but it actually gave, um, onboarded a whole new pool of collectors, an, an audience that is that were really interested in uh, computer technology and also then blockchain. 
and uh, and it allowed the artists actually to meet with their public and with their buyers and to be able to sell and to go to market in a very efficient way. Something that for digital artists before it was very hard because it was difficult to uh, collect uh, and. Uh, and I think um, all together, like really created this uh, this uh, phenomenon where that we know in uh, 2020, 2021, with the rise of generative art on chain, uh, and something that we are very invested in because I think it's the most important evolution we've seen in the past uh, decades in terms of uh, the in, uh, in contemporary art. There's this concept, and I may be using the term incorrectly, so forgive me, of a digital twin. So having a physical piece of art and then a digital, an NFT that represents that physical piece of art on the blockchain. What we've spoken about so far today is traditional art and NFT art, um, one removed from the other. Do you think that there is a future maybe for the traditional collector in having the digital version of their art on a blockchain? No, having uh, like a copy of the image that like they can enjoy having the copy in many different uh, ways, even as a poster, as a photo, and so they can bring it in a home they don't have access to that painting. But that doesn't give any that like the the image on the blockchain doesn't recreate the aura and the originality of the work. Uh, but what we could see and the the interest collectors may have is like having a digital certificate. Um, that uh, is the that will be the most uh, impermeable way to prove the authenticity, the provenance, and the transfer of ownership of a work. Uh, because um, with time and the older the works are, the 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 the, the more the provenance takes an importance in terms of value. And so, the more pristine is the provenance, and also the the knowledge of of the the, the different hands and the different collectors this work been through, uh, the most valuable the work should be so uh we we think that there is a lot of we, we should see as a, a way uh for the blockchain to impact the traditional art industry uh, more on that front on the authenticity side what was Sotheby's nft revenue in 2023 in 2023 we made close to 35 million of sales and including some records uh for you for unique works unique digital works uh we were not in a bear market but we had uh, the chance to to really be placing ourselves as leading the high end of the market, and I think that's the 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 tier uh, of the market that suffered the, the less, uh, because naturally, and we see that in the whole history of art, uh, with time there is a selection being made in what becomes uh, blue chip and what what which artist which series from uh, certain artists will pass the test of time. And so it goes, everything goes very uh, fast, like a lot faster in the, in the NFT, in the blockchain industry. And we see, we saw this process being very accelerated actually in the NFT space. And so there've been a selection of 10, 15, maybe 20, maybe a bit more of artists that really uh, were less, they, they've been impacted, but less impacted than other tier of, uh, of the market. And since we are focused on it, we've been less affected in terms of uh, overall results. So $35 million in 2023, what percentage of the business or how big of a business would you say the NFT art is compared to uh, the rest of Sotheby's business? No, we, we, are, we are a very, very large uh, company. We have 52 offices. We have 80 categories, uh, a few sales every day happening in all the of these uh, categories. Uh, but I think what is uh, the the importance this department has for Sotheby's, it's like the when we think in five, ten years, and fifteen years, uh, in, like in the future, because um, we have seventy percent of our clients uh, in the purchasing and selling NFTs are ten years younger than the average client uh, at Sotheby's, and so we are definitely attracting a younger uh, generation. I, I think that's something when we look at the future. Uh, that is extremely valuable for a company like Sotheby's, where we uh, always need to understand what will be the needs and the um, and the demand uh, in the in the near future. And also in terms of the technology, because Web3, that's just the sale of digital art, but Web3 also can enable and uh, facilitate a lot of the process we have currently in the art industry. And so that's something that we 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 could uh, see being very impactful for the company in the in the future when it gets more uh, democratized. 
Okay. And speaking of that future, if you were to look into the future uh, and take a peek at the future of art and the role that digital art plays in that, what do you see in 10, 20 years from now? In digital art, I would see that the selection continue to be harder and harder. And we see uh, just um, uh, one or two maybe artists from 20 been that we know from 21 being still uh, known and valuable. And then uh, the artist actually being way more uh, educated and understanding the way they can use uh, this medium in a conceptual way, uh, in a creative way, and uh, starting to attract uh, more traditional uh, galleries, institutions. And so uh, we'll see probably the top seller, uh, the top selling artists coming in the next years to me. So uh, we are still at the very beginning and on both sides, on both on the, the purchaser and collecting side, but also in terms of the creation side, I think there is um, a lot to, to improve also on the quality of the project we see. Mikael, thanks so much for joining the show. Thank you.